All right, yeah, we're fucked, we're fucked. Jungle yeah, Beats fucked. in the house, episode two of Rick and Morty. <sighs> Multiplicity. That's what's up. We both just watched this episode today, so we are fresh. You just watched it right now. We're about to deliver yeah. an episode discussion analysis, Jungle Beats nonsense style. <laughs> mm -hmm. And break down the episode. I think... This episode, and also if you guys, we do episode by episode. If you want to see episode one, it's on our channel. Anyway, anyway. All right. So, this episode, in one word to me, was like chaos. <laughs> you could use that word a lot with a lot of the episodes. But, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty accurate uh, outtake for it, I'd say. I, I agree with you. It was... You that kind of set you up. I can't like they're like playing with ideas. It's almost like uh, the writer's room. It's like you know, we say they're gonna go kill God, we're gonna kill God today. It's like that's an idea for an episode, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, I kind of wanted to see that. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to see it as well. I kind of hope they do it. I thought that was gonna be, and then it is shot down. That idea is shot down, and it's, I love how it's like, oh, these can't be the real Rick and Morty's because Jerry has a job interview. Yeah, I love whenever Jerry does, and also when Jerry is like cooking. That's another way where they think like <laughs> Jerry just isn't normal in any of the decoy situations. Goddamn Jerry! And uh, then mm. the idea is shot down that we're gonna kill God. You know what would be a good drinking game? Watching this episode, and every time they say the word decoy, you take a shot. Oh dear! Oh <laughs> dear! That's heavy. That's that's gone. fucking death right there. That's, that's death. <laughs> What did you, what did you think of the episode before we keep going? Sorry, I missed that. What, what did you think of the episode before we keep going? Um, it's still pretty fresh in my mind. I will admit that I enjoyed it, but I know after the first episode, the first episode was so good. So this was still, it was like, it was a fun episode to watch and it was silly which is fine because, you know, with Rick and Morty, you get some more serious episodes and you get some really fucking dumb episodes, like good dumb. I kind of just like, because the whole time I was watching it, I was just like, oh, are they going to, uh, are these the real ones now? Are these not the decoys? Is, is there going to be another story after this? I'm, I'm used to Rick and Morty having so many stories within the story, but no, the whole episode was based around everyone just kept being a decoy up until the very fucking end, which they could have been decoys. That was the, that was the episode. Right. It's the clusterfuck. It was. And I guess it didn't have, sorry, my Mexican music. Um, I don't know if it had like so much of a resolution, like some of the episodes can have. Maybe some people think it went around in circles. And so it's replayability as a classic, maybe not the same. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I think it's really interesting. Oh, then we see. Uh, <laughs> hunt me. <laughs> hunt me. Somebody hunt me <laughs> that's so good what's his name again i don't think they even got a name he just no, looks like mr he's just like fat mr poopy butthole yeah but uh, that's what i thought it was a play on because it's the same voice yeah i don't i don't think he even got a name oh no no he does say a name he's like my name's like mr hunt me or something like that i mean it'll say it coming out and he comes back to bite them all um you know he does because no one hunted him i feel for him bro he just wants to be hunted you know this episode like it also brings to the light that, you know, the pilot Rick and Morty, like the first episode Rick and Morty, right? Yeah, yeah, the original. Yeah, yeah. The well, the OG is probably long gone. Like there's, I think there's this episode kind of showed that there's never a guarantee we're watching the same Rick and Morty from the yes. pilot. And it actually probably doesn't matter. Yeah, I think that's a really good pickup because it's kind of just like... Don't get so attached to one Rick and Morty because every episode, it could be any dimension. It could be any alternate timeline. Like it's just, it's just Rick and Morty what it comes down to. And I like the line about him saying like, why do you care so much like about existing? Like you're here, you're not, you know? So it's it kind of like, it's an existential kind of question. Yeah. About life. There you go. I am Mr. Always Want to Be Hunted. That's his name. Oh, that's his name. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand this sentence. I watched it back twice. Yes, and how interesting did you think that would stay? You don't get it? Oh, no. It's basically because the whole time he's saying, hunt me, hunt me. It's basically Rick being, like, aware of, like, people listening and being, like, 
He's basically like, because there's probably people watching the show that like aren't in Super and Morty and they'd watch this guy and not find it funny. So it's him basically voicing those opinions, I feel. So it's the writers like being aware that this is probably not an interesting story to do. Oh, just aware of this character. Just aware that this character isn't a character that any show would normally do. Like who would fucking create a character like this? Think about it. And it's, so it's based... Yeah, it's Rick's way of just being like, how interesting did you think this would stay? Like, no one has made this a character because you're not interesting enough. Like, you're a one. It's kind of similar to the episode. The, the episode is all about just the one thing being decoy. So it's basically about this character. This character has one thing. It's about being hunted. And that's that's as far as his character goes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that um, clarification. You, all right. So now we, we were committed. You kind of think, okay, this is the this is the family, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then they get you every time. It repeats, repeats, repeats. It's like, okay, this is the real family. No. I mean, honestly, once it got to like the third or fourth family, I, I just expect them to be... The, I think it, until it gets to like the, the Muppet ones where they take off their costumes, I was like, okay, maybe these ones are the real ones, but no. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how they play you. Uh, but a reference you. to Space Beth, which we see in the end. Mm -hmm. Who love her character. And of course... The writers are aware like people keep asking to see more of her and i agree she's one of the most interesting characters i'd love it i'd love an episode just about her to be honest i mean it's 10 episode season we'll see what we get we shall see continually shutting dio down <laughs> but yeah I, I did enjoy this episode i think if you can if you're okay just enjoying watching dumb shit and just rick and morty humor like when wolf <laughs> like then yeah, then it's it's enjoyable, but nowhere near as good as the first episode. The first episode shits all over this. But kind of like, like, like that could be seen as like a classic episode. Yes, I think it can. I think the first episode of the season is going to be considered a classic. And I think they recognize that because they reference it here, which they don't do callbacks that often, I think, to previous episodes so quickly. Mm -hmm. Like Starfish they... Man and the Target Suit. Oh, is that from the first episode? I, I think that's I, I think that's a reference to uh I think it's referencing the, 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 the hunt me guy, isn't it? Oh, is he Starfish Man in a Target suit? Pretty sure that's the Oh hunt Target me. suit. Yeah. Oh, I thought they meant the store target. They were they were referencing Mr. Nimbus. It could be. My bad. Maybe that's why was he in that cryopod? Was Mr. Hunt Me in a cryopod? I don't remember seeing a cryopod. Maybe uh Secret you... decoy families, maybe that's. Do you remember seeing a cryopod? No. I don't that's. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's just an awareness of the writers. Can't we see you move to higher stakes? Like, I don't know. That's just think they're being aware of their story that they're doing. And this is. We see an alternate family of Rick. I'm sorry, Morty being poolside next to a. Uh... Hunk of a dude just yeah. throwing him peaches and he's just eating them. <laughs> It's like so, it's so good heavy sexual innu innuendo i love it i love it and yeah i think i think by this point i was kind of like mm, i think this might be the real family but i wouldn't be surprised if they didn't and then after that i'm just like all right yeah awesome. same and then once they keep killing it, it kind of the stakes decrease like yep. your care for seeing this particular family survive decreases yeah, it's true, because in the very beginning when you see them all die, it's kind of like a lot of shock and a lot of like feeling because you've attached to a lot of these characters. But then, of course, the more it goes on, the more you realize that, like, okay, if they ever die in any episode ever again, why would it matter when they could just be a decoy? Yeah, and I, I think that's kind of one of the ultimate lessons that I take from this episode is that it. I don't know if it matters that... <sighs> whether animation characters live or die if you built into their story the continual surviving of them in some way if that makes sense you're going to constantly see them there's no yeah. stakes it's not like a movie where a main character dies yeah it's called rick and morty like <laughs> they're like, staying you're gonna see them. maybe beth and jerry and summer wouldn't come back but i'm pretty sure they'll always be there but then they add these side characters like a space beth or uh what Ooh. other character side characters Ah, oh, Squanchy, Birdman. There you go. Mr. Nimbus. And is this interdimensional cable here? Yes. I love this part. This is my favorite part of the episode. I like this is my favorite stuff. Because when Wolf, it's so good. Do you reckon there'll be another episode where they do uh, Was Wolf? <laughs> and it's like a guy that like isn't a wolf because he was a wolf. It's just like a normal human. It's just like, Was Wolf? Where? where? Is this? It's just like in a business suit or something. I don't know. I can predict them doing something like that. 
I where, think there's so many ideas for where when was interdimensional cable. I know. <laughs> and then Dracula. Oh, this, yeah, this part's great. This is my kind of humor. That was, it was so good. And then they just fucking die. <laughs> These 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 Rick and Morty's are just decoys, just watching dimensional cable. Anyway. I like how we can pause it. We they, they take attention to detail where like the framing is really like I can pause it and I can see the laser go through them so clearly. Yeah, like the the, <laughs> the drawing and animation is is really nice. So you're thinking, all right, they're gonna set up this house uh, to protect them. What are they eating here? What's going on? It just looks like they're eating like curried egg or like um or just like um scrambled eggs, I'd say. I would like to point out that I read on Reddit. Uh, see the watch he's wearing? Yeah. So there's a hypothesis that every Rick that is wearing a watch is not actually the real original Rick and is a copy because why would they all? That's one thing they all have in common. Yeah. Why would the original Rick need a watch for the decoy when he's the OG creator? Right. And I also like the line about when they're just like, we can't hide because if we try and think of any way to hide, then they'll know where we're going to hide because they are us. Rule 34. Really fucking cool line. What's rule 34? That uh, Rule 34 is like, if it if it exists, I mean, if it's already out there, then it's or, it's kind of like, if there was a clone of you, like if you could think of anything to do, the idea is already out there in the world because you know there's another you out there. I think that's what it is. Hold on, let me let me quickly Google it. It's like if it exists, then it's oh, if it exists, then it's on the internet. I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. Rule thirty four: production of documents and things and entry upon. No, that's that's no. No, it's an internet maxim which asserts the internet pornography exists concerning every conceivable topic. Yeah, there you go. They should do an episode on that. So many ideas. I love this one of my favorite lines here. Do you just get hard creating sentient life? <laughs> no, I get hard about my family. <laughs> Protecting <laughs> my family. Just... Fuck it. It's a great line. <laughs> and look at Morty's face and some of those. Like a lot of the time in this episode, I'll like pay attention to some of the other characters when they're not talking and they're always doing some form of like bodily emotion. Like it's a very, very much attention to detail. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the good the interesting thing about rewatching things and pausing it like this. Yeah. Like, look at Summer's face, like, skeptical, skeptical face. Like, how do we know we're not decoys? <laughs> you kind of have this moment. <laughs> and Morty loses yeah. shit. It's That's probably one of the funniest moments of the episode. This was great. I, 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 I think I, th I knew he was going to fart, though. As soon as he pulled out his butt cheeks, I'm like, I know he's going to fucking fart. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking. And poor Summer, everyone tells her to fuck off all the time. She's becoming the Meg of the family. That's that's a that's a good a comparison. And you you're at the point now where you know you don't know the Rick and Morty the squids are the Rick and Mortys. You actually yeah. think there's some external threat. I actually started to think that the squids would be Rick and Morty the more families died. It okay. made it made more sense to me for them to be decoys the more people kept dying. So I predicted that to happen at some point. That makes sense. I can feel yeah, that. It's, it's do you a, know? It's a good script. Do you know what this uh, eight zero zero eight five is uh, means? No. You... Is so, there a meaning for it? Uh, type that in a calculator and see what it's how it would symbolize us. Eight. Oh, boobs! <laughs> Amazing. But, but, there's al another, but there's another code later on that someone says. I wonder what that one says. But also, the a penis. Like, the symbol of a penis. Isn't the penis, like, 8 equals D? Yes. <laughs> well, I put... I got right next to it. 80085, and then the penis symbol. Oh, but I think there were two codes, and that's one of each. Yeah, yeah. So one, one's the penis, and one's that one. Oh, boobs. So boobs and penis. Lovely. I mean, I did that in high school with a calculator. I feel like most people did. And a, a little uh, reference. To, there's a lot of references to different shows here. Yeah, because there's Westworld and there's Deuce Ex Machina. <laughs> they, uh, Ex Machina. Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> and like Westworld, because they control 
they control people by control synthetics. Yeah, by like certain codes and certain languages, like mm. seesaw functions, seesaw motor functions. You know, you, same similar thing here, which Rick is trying to do with the code. And I love this, but don't fuck them, because they end up fucking it, in Westworld. Yeah, they, they end up killing a fucking this war. <laughs> So I, and they did that twice. I was really impressed that they could make the reference twice to another sci-fi show, Ex Machina. I'm like, yeah, he had romantic feelings, and they they trying to have sex as well. So many sci-fi movies they're trying to have sex with the robots. Oh man, I'm all about fucking shows with um with synthetic life because we're gonna get there one day, man. It's I feel like it's inevitable as humans. We're just always looking to, you know, heighten ourselves through technology. So eventually we'll get there. Do you think we we'll be alive to see it? Um, I think we will. I think it'll be like really early stages of a uh, maybe AI or maybe really later stages of VI. But I think we'll. I think we're around to see early stages of AI. I hope so. I'm very curious. Imagine, imagine like fucking your. Imagine being an AI. Like you were created by humans, and just having that fucking knowledge. Like because. A lot of people say the difference between synthetic life and organic life is organics don't know who created them. Synthetics know who created them. There's a big difference well, in how you go about life. Would a synthetic life know who created it? Um, if it was programmed to know, how would it know? Well, I mean, like, I'm just saying, like, if humans create a synthetic life, they'd know. The synthetic life would know who created it? Yeah, well, if you're an artificial intelligence, you have your own freedom to think. So I feel like they'd be, they'd be told it or they'd, they'd figure it out because you know you'd want to know it's just a normal feeling like when you're when you're born and you build up the knowledge it's just, it's just a normal feeling to want to know how you get to be here as as created. a sentient life form but as a artificial intelligence created by humans would that artificial intelligence have the awareness to even question who made it yes because the idea of artificial intelligence is to make it as close to human as possible so once so once a VI becomes an AI, it's when they're aware of what they are and aware of their existence. And I feel like once you get to that stage, you get closer to being, I guess, more human. I think if that's how we define it, if it's aware of its existence and it has that sentience, mm. then I think it would be natural for it to ask those questions. <laughs> I mean, a little off topic, but I love talking about this shit. I fucking I fucking love that shit, man. I, oh, I'm look, all about it. Maybe we should review other sci-fi things one day too oh yeah man like uh what's one of our favorites is not westworld westworld's one of them but um the other one on netflix fuck man oh I'm amazon on. prime um, oh fucking the expanse the expanse yes yeah i just finished watching season five bro it was uh it was good yeah man incredible show it's really fucking good so we could do that if the people want it let us know or the new tyler album <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do music too <laughs> we do everything uh so morty's been busting nuts in a yosu my t-shirt come on morty <laughs> why can't you finish with that what's going on there i also like that they're adding a lot more sex sex jokes in now very confronting ones that because they mentioned i think in an interview before this season that uh they were going to do more sexually confronting jokes i think they even begun that with the how in the first episode how uh beth communicated to her husband trying new sexual things <laughs> yeah. mr nimbus very sexually charged yeah i'm about it i think sex should be normalized well we can't all get here without it so far well in I vitro mean, yeah that's another thing we'll see in the future because you know what i think i think i'd, I'd like a future where women didn't have to give birth I mean, of course, they're, we, you know, I'm not a woman, but I feel like because we're human, it, people get to a stage where they want to give birth because that's just what our DNA wants us to do. But mm. it'd be nice, I think, to get to a stage where women would have the choice if they could give birth in a way that doesn't involve them going through nine months of fucking labor to be in the intense pain. It'd be nice if they could avoid that, if they had the choice to do that. Although some would say that connects you, like that is a process that connects you with the experience of giving life. And it makes it sacred and more meaningful, perhaps. Hence why giving them the option of the choice. Because I feel like if I was a woman, I would want to give life without going through all that shit. And I feel like I'd still be connected because the fact that it's my DNA and I get to raise it. Like Actually, even the fact that it's my DNA wouldn't matter. The fact that I would raise it and watch them grow from 
you know, nothing to whatever that is the fuck they be at. That's enough, I feel, to connect you to something. I think some women, if you hear some women speak about the experience of pregnancy, some may describe it as a out-of-body, most unique experience that we will never know. We will never know as males. Good. I'd, oh, bro. I'm, I'm but not all, pre- let's, let's, not all pregnancies are uh, heartache and painful for so many months. Some women have really healthy, great pregnancies. Oh, that's true. But some women don't. Absolutely. Some women, it's hell. But you want to birth a life? Boy, oh boy. It ain't easy. <laughs> All right, where are we at now? Uh, Notice how none, another indication that none of these Rick and Mortys are the original is that none of them have a portal gun and none of them go to space. That is very true. None of them have a portal gun. That's a very, very good point. I credit Reddit. You were poet and you didn't even realize. Oh, you got to do it. You didn't even do it. I had to. So th- none of the decoys have off-world adventures, you know? Yeah. They're just regulars. You're right. None of them do have portal guns. And they've all got watches. Yeah, exactly. Which is a li- little side note indication. You don't... Yeah, that's at 80085 again. Yeah, we haven't really seen the portal guns this season at all, really. No, not yet. It's It's been used so much, though, in previous seasons. But it's, it's just so good because it's just... Having a portal gun just means you have infinite possibilities of what you do with an episode because it goes wherever the fuck you want. That's the beauty of it. That's right. It's a paintbrush. Yes, yeah, because you go to any world. Mm-hmm. What's this? I, uh, so that's the same one. So that doesn't work on him. And then someone else who's at the door uses the other one. And that's that's when the moment where, you, where you're, you're as a viewer, yeah, you're like... Go, equal sign, the dick. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you, that, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then they try and hide. And you... I, I, I mean... You're kind of rooting, I think, for the, the Rick and Morty's in the closet, but then you realize, no, nothing matters. Yeah, I still think... I, I, I thought at this point they were both decoys. I'm just waiting for them to fucking die. Because that's, you know, it's just how you feel after watching so much death happen. So, really, so many pictures of horses on the walls. Um, yeah, because Beth's a horse doctor and she <laughs> loves horses. Yes. And then you know the ending is inevitable death because they're the same. Like these Rick and Morty's, like yeah. they have the same. They're exactly the same. Mentality to, as a, as a plan. Like we're going to rush yeah. him. Yeah. And they want to rush as well. They're, you know, yeah, they're very similar families. And then bang, a new one comes in. And the Asimov cascade is a is a reference to like the laws of robotics, the three laws of robotics. Yeah. I, I read. Um, it's just called something a little bit different. And then we ch- we kind of get it explained to us. I love this explanation because he's drawing and he turns it around and the camera goes off for one second, comes back, and this is big fuck off thing. There this you go. Thing. Like like it took him like two seconds to draw it. And uh, in one of the videos that the writers did, he kind of gave an example of like, this is how 3AM, he kind of storyboarded this idea. Like he it. did a version of this. Yeah, that's it right there. Because someone had to draw that, right? So <laughs> that's that's what he came up with. It's so good. I haven't seen the movie Highlander, have you? Yeah, it's it's not good, but it is it is a classic. I mean, I mean, no, when I say it's not good, I mean like it is a good film, but it's just like, is it though? Fuck, actually, I don't know what I'm talking so about. So, can you remember like the Highlander rules and how it references this movie? Or this there could be only one because there can only there can be only one Highlander. That's the whole. That's the whole like uh, what the the movie's themed around. Which is what this episode is themed around. There should be only one Rick and Morty. Anyway, exactly. I'm sorry if you can hear music in the background. My, uh, my no, the mic is great, man. The mic is great. I don't my hear housemates, nothing. Uh, housemates are making beats right now. Jungle beats. Holler at me. Yeah, bro. I've been making fire. I'm making a beat every day, but I'm fucking tired. So that is such good consistency, man. Got it, man. You got to work hard. You got to work hard to get to what you want to do. So, when I... can... 
Sorry, I'm just laughing at the squid outfits. <laughs> this is when, well when they when they eventually meet the oh, I love this I love this line to this moment here. Okay. Maybe they're jealous of my penis size. Yeah. I had sex with the queen. And he mentions his dick again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'd see Rick having a big dick. I mean, he's he's the most powerful man in the world. He can do whatever the fuck he wants with his dick. I mean, he's probably like he's like simply he's a symbiotic half machine too. So who mm-hmm. knows what he's packing? Oh, yeah, this is when they see my yeah. So when this happened, I'm like, I fucking bet you. And then I'm like, okay. So yeah, this is when so they like, confirm yeah. that everybody's a Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. And, and then, he, then he's got this little alien which is squeezing his nipples to give like some candy which he was eating like okay <laughs> that's just a classic rick move of course he's gonna yeah, create snacks yeah. from an alien by fucking what putting jumper cables on his nipples <laughs> and this is a cool move i think i like this scene it's like just showing us different variations of yeah how they're discovering <laughs> the one on the wall I yeah <laughs> i think they're references to different movies as well Oh yeah, there's definitely a lot of movie references in this episode. Like I picked up one with Saving Private Ryan when Summer's attacking Summer. Oh really? Oh nice. I'm pretty sure that's what it's from. And then you get real primitive Rick and Morty. <laughs> the the because the reference early in the show, it's like if you make a copy of a copy of a copy, eventually it starts degrading. Yeah. And exactly. I think that's what we get here. Mm-hmm. Oh man, how how creepy is it seeing Rick like out of his skin? Like holy shit! It's done so well. It's like it's, it's so weirdly well. artistically beautiful. Yeah, it is. I, did you think this guy looks like Bender from Futurama on mm-hmm. the right? Not really, but I can see I can see why you would think it looked like Bender because it's the same color and he's a robot. And the shape. And then, then there's a the scarecrow, and then there's him. <laughs> he's made from straw. Oh, that looks painful. Just your fucking muscles and sinew. And then you think, oh wow, there's some, there's some altruistic, uh, you know, Puppetry. Rick and Morty's. <laughs> yeah, look at them. I love it. The puppets. But you can set fire to wood very easily. And then they go to this. It's like the Citadel, but like for decoys. Yeah, for decoys. Oh god. And this. This Jerry is amazing. Which yeah, this we'll, this we'll Jerry see. we'll see later on. Oh yeah, that the ending to this one is so good. Oh my god, it's so one good. of the best. But we'll see him in a second. And the reference to God again. I like they started the, the episode referencing, you know, we're gonna do a thing about God, and I think it's kind of a subtle reference that Rick also acknowledges himself as a God. Hmm. I mean, he he is really. I feel like a God is someone that has enough power to create life and, you know, create an existence for them, which is perfect. And I feel like Rick can do that for himself. Well, maybe nearly there because, you know. He's as close as you get, right? Yeah. Because he, he, I guess it's just his happiness, which suffers because of it. And this is interesting. It's like the, yeah. the only one that we, the Rick and Morty families that's actually like content. Yeah. They're actually happy and like, and then they get, killed because of it because there's other rick and morty's out there that are you know not like them and i think ultimately like there can't this can't be the show like you can't have a content happy yes. rick and morty because then it wouldn't be no one would want to watch it right i wouldn't i wouldn't want to watch this That's and i think watch it for. i think that says a lot for tv shows and movies and it's like mm-hmm. maybe movies end like that sometimes Typically, that's not the whole thing. You watch it and it's engaging because there's turmoil. Mm, Because there's... It's a really good scene. Yeah, they looked happy. Do we have to kill them? Yes. Otherwise, the show probably wouldn't be that interesting. Star Fox Boss Season 4. I don't know that. I I love this bit. He's just like fucking slaps himself in the face. He's like, come on, bitch. Come on, let's fucking do this. I, yeah, I love that. I love that. It's like he's, that he's getting G'd up to fight. Hyping himself up because he's fucking tired of this bullshit. I, 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 oh, oh where, where'd I go? Where'd you go? Oh, it's probably my internet. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Yeah, it's probably just my internet. I thought I pressed a button and you disappeared. Nah. Well, if you turn off and on your camera. Yeah, let me just try that. Can you see the screen? There we go. So at first, I think this this Rick is hologram is just in the sky. 
But then we realize it's a beacon that goes into space. Yeah. And you're thinking, now it's on. Oh, yeah, it's fucking on. I love all how the stage you see all the different, like, all the different kind of ricks. And this part with the presidents, I'm so glad they included this because the president's a great character. He is. Obviously, still, like, I know this is an important reference, the electoral college um, and the slavery reference. I just don't know and can't remember what an electoral college is. Amer- our American viewers probably can enlighten us. Yes. And the reference. <laughs> I'll take you out to the kitchen and bring me a Diet Coke. I love it. <laughs> So they get some, they get some sweet weapons. They, they, f- it's just chaos. This is like the ultimate oh, yeah. chaos in Dude, this episode. All killing each other, all decoys, killing decoys. And, and it's, and then you get this. Oh, is this? Yeah, this is when I thought. Oh, this might. When they take off their Muppet costumes, this is when I was like, oh, this might be the real Rick and Morty. Like my, finally, I'm just like, okay, I, there's a, there's a feeling here that this could be it. But does he have the watch? I can't see it on his. I assume he would. And then it's kind of like a... They just get shot down immediately. It's a fight to the death. You think, who's going to survive? See this part here, where Summer Summer gets slowly stabbed here. In Saving Private Ryan, there's like a scene where uh, one of the soldiers gets like slowly stabbed to death like that. Oh, really? Yeah, it's brutal. There you go. I'm pretty sure it's that movie. I could be wrong. There's a lot of war movies. And then just like, you know, uh, a lot of movies and Marvel movies, like soldiers will have, um, the, like the if you remember Hydra, they have the thing in their teeth where they chop it down Ooh, and they kill go themselves. Back, go back to that pause before this one. You can see that they're both biting their teeth at the same time. So the Rick on the right's like his teeth, his teeth's blowing red and the other one's is glowing blue. Yeah. But obviously the the one on the right with the red is the self-detonation suicide. I don't think... Maybe the elect... Oh, yeah, maybe he's trying to suicide, but then the blue that he's doing is, like, protecting him from, like, the explosion. Yeah, I don't know what that... Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh... I don't know what that is. Or maybe he's... Yet... Sho- yeah. I think maybe he shocked him to death and it made him explode before his could even work. There's many, there's many ways it could be. And so you think, okay... Here we're just like, okay, are these... Is, is this the end? And it's like, you know, you kind of have this moment. It's like, okay, have they changed? Like, did did Rick realize something and learn something? At this, but... at, this, at this moment, I expected them to die as well. I was like, <laughs> but I didn't expect them to die. <laughs> My mister always wants to hunt me. No, this was a this was an unexpected turn. Yeah, I did not see this coming. Which you love from Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah. You should have hunted me. <laughs> I love his character. He's so dumb. It's so good. And I wonder if he'll make a re- resurgence, you know? I, because I really hope they do. I really hope he just comes to an episode with the with the real Rick that people want and then Rick just shoots him straight away. I'd love to see that. Like he just gets killed like instantly. Right. And Rick, and Rick doesn't even look at him while doing it. Right. <laughs> that, would, that would be a great, a great thing. That would that. tie the knot, tie the bow. I, I think so. It would make sense. And then you get to, okay, oh, well, it doesn't really matter if this is the original Rick and Morty, but it makes sense because they're in space. Yeah. Space Beth, what's up? <laughs> Deco family, what now? Yeah. And you think this is where it could repeat. Oh, yeah, it could just, it could just keep going. But then they obviously end the episode. You only have 20 minutes, so. And yeah, you- I thought... And then this part's so good. Oh, man. You get to see uh, Puppet Cherry's <laughs> beavers. Because obviously they use wood for their... Oh, yeah. For their nests. And he realizes... Too late. And it's re- the music The music really gets it. The music really yeah. makes the, the ending. Oh, they're so cute. And then he's just like, oh, I'm going to drown. But like, he just... Like, nothing will let him die. And just simply, and then there's a woodpecker. So it goes, and that looks like a dolphin. Now, this is a reference to a past episode. Is it? If you remember, now I know you can't see, but if you remember, I put it on the screen. Uh, here, let me see, let me share it for you. All right. 
here we see a reference to episode season two, episode one. Oh yeah, the time guy. Yeah, with the, with this the is, slug for a gun. <laughs> I yeah, love that episode. That's a great episode. If you get to the dolphin people, you're going too far. Oh, so he's gone too far. That's that's a really good pickup. And then someone mentions like a, a, a nice comment. Okay, here. The testicle time authority do was trying to give time directions to another testicle. He said, if you get to, yep. In the most recent episode, we briefly see the distant future where there appears to be dolphin people alongside bird people, right? So that there's. That's so good. That's such, do you reckon, do you reckon is it, that it could just be like a detail they didn't even realize though? No, I think they planned that. You reckon they planned it? Yeah. But I could, I could see like, because if I'm just making random people, from animals i could be like oh yeah i'll just do a dolphin you know may, you know what of course it could be accidental I, but that's a, that's a because they make so many references right i'm sure it's accidentally going to reference something yeah oh, so jerry gets he gets taken on a ride he does and then he becomes what a, a mantle in a bar so he's going through history <laughs> and every time he like wakes up and comes back to life like people just want to kill him because they just unaf- they just don't know what the fuck he is and then they burn him like okay surely fire will kill him because he's made of wood right nope <laughs> and then christianity again after cowboys it's like yeah. he's doing a cycle through history it's it's so it's so good we went all the back and just the voice acting is really good he actually sounds like why can't I die? He sounds like he's in pain. Yeah, he does. I mean, imagine going through what he went through. Fuck that. This is the worst thing to happen to anyone. And then... Yeah. Thousands of years of just not being able to die and not being able to move. <sighs> and that's it. And that's it. But yeah, all in all, like, I, I enjoyed the episode, but it's not going to be an episode that I, I'm going to go back to, I feel. Like, I can enjoy it for what it is. I'll mm. probably watch it again at some other point. But it just... Compared to the first episode, the first episode is like a nine out of ten. This is like a seven out of ten. Yeah, I feel you. It's um, like it's not weak, but it's not strong. It doesn't have the same like, it doesn't capture you in the same way. It has a really rapid pacing, and not go- like a good pacing. It's exciting, mm-hmm. but like you appreciate it for what it is, and we'll see what comes next but i enjoyed the chaos oh yes i enjoyed the chaos also it was uh it was just a you know a pleasure to watch in that regard because you're just constantly just thinking what's going to happen next is this the real family that's what's on your mind the whole episode yeah i I think uh and it answers some of the (sighs) some of the questions or at least the concerns on who's the og family doesn't matter doesn't fucking matter who the og is and i think that's a cool thing with like beth as well they show safe space but at the end it's just like which is the real beth does it really fucking matter yeah so that's it man unless you got any more thoughts that's it no i feel like it's hard to be more thought-provoking with this episode because it's more just watch and watch dumb shit happen than uh, the previous episode where there's a lot more i feel like you know introspective things you could have picked up whereas here it's like you know yeah not every episode is going to be some deep introspection about yeah life which i like which i like because that's rick and morty you know they give you a bit of different everything every episode like maybe we'll just get an episode with morty playing golf the whole episode <laughs> i would fucking love that an yeah right where maybe an episode where like because morty's not good at anything right like, it's like, I'm not smart. I'm not really good at much. Imagine if he just randomly played golf and was amazing at it. And then he starts to become a professional golfer. But then there's like an ulterior motive where it's just like the reason he's really good at golf is because of something else. And then like people start trying to like kill him or try and get him to do something else because he's so good at golf. I don't know. I can, I can see that being an episode where if Morty's good at something, it comes at a price. Of course. It has to because Morty can't just have a good episode. He has to have some type of problem exactly. to deal with. Exactly. All right, y'all. That's it. Jungle Beats. If you want this Jungle Beats merch, links in the description. At say, say, say. dot com. Say, say, say. I noticed you'd be yawning, man. You, you tired? You had a, you had a long day at uh, yeah, man, music I, making. Yeah, pretty much yesterday. I I made I made a track. I went to school. I worked, and today I've just been the same, pretty much. So I'm just I'm probably gonna make a track now and try and go to bed. Jungle Beats, baby. 
Jungle Beats, you know exactly what it is. We'll see you next week. These release every Monday, our time, I believe, Monday night. Yeah, I like Monday. So we'll get on this now as soon as we can. True, it's Tuesday today. We're fucking quick. Too fast. Too furious. We'll see you all next week. Jungle Beats. I'm Alexander Manuel Sandalis. You can check me out on the internet. Who are you? I'm Thade Gray. Who? The homie. Thade, Thade Gray. Oh, shit. That's me. Jungle Beats out of here. Oof, oof. It's lit. Fuck yeah, man. I'm glad we could get on this pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.